For decades, zealots of the far right have dreamed of casting their spell over Britain. From Oswald Mosley's black shirts, to skinheads, to nationalists in suits and ties. On June the 16th this year, one such zealot went to the ultimate extreme. On a street in Northern England, Tommy Mayer repeatedly stabbed and shot the local MP, Joe Cox. A week later, far-right groups sought to claim a share of the credit when this happened. Let June the 23rd go down in our history as our independence day! I'm Tom Burgess. I'm trying to understand how a year that saw the nation stunned by an act of far-right violence is ending with nationalists convinced that their ideas are advancing towards the mainstream. We're in Burstall in Yorkshire. The 52-year-old man who would kill Joe Cox lived down this road. This is the house where Tommy Mayer lived. It's on a council estate in West Yorkshire, just up the hill from where he would murder Joe Cox. Neighbours talk about a recluse, a guy they'd only see occasionally tending a lawn or looking after a cat. But inside this house, he was steeping himself in white racist ideology. Throughout his trial, Tommy Mayer was silent. But we know that for three decades he'd been writing to far-right groups from the US to South Africa. In 1998, Mayer wrote to a pro-apartheid activist saying that British nationalists were coming under attack by mobs of reds and blacks. He went on, Despite everything, I still have hope that the white race will prevail, both in Britain and South Africa. But I fear it's going to be a very long and very bloody struggle. His next-door neighbour Katie Green didn't want to be filmed. She told me that Mayer seemed depressed. Never had any visitors, but you got used to him. Did you ever get a sense of his his politics? That he's a, he had sort of far right politics. No, never. Wouldn't have thought he were into anything like that. Following Joe Cox's murder, all the mainstream parties agreed not to stand in the by-election to fill her seat. But four far-right groups did put up candidates, including the British National Party. The BNP have long stopped using openly racist language. It's a free pair, but you don't get much for free in life. Their candidate is David Furness. No, you need, you need to get over there so the, the sun can shine on the righteous. The main concern is the pressure on uh, housing, um, the school places, and um, the National Health Service. I don't think race comes into it that much. But Nick Lowell's disagrees. He's the head of Hope Not Hate, an organisation that seeks to counter racism and fascism in the UK. To kind of succeed at the ballot box, groups like the BNP have to put on a kind of um, a, a mainstream face. You know, they have to say, we're not racist, we just talk about immigration, you know, we aren't against all Muslims, we're just against extremists. But of course, they, they, they are hiding their kind of true politics. You know, if you look at the BNP constitution, if you look at the background of the people involved in the BNP, you know, they're as hardcore as, as they always have been. And indeed, eventually the BNP candidate comes round to the subject of race. There are areas which have been overtaken, not, not just by um, different races, but by the same race. I mean, the Polish are, are still Caucasian. Uh, they've been pushed out, and that actually represents ethnocide. They used to be taboo subjects, but now they've come out into the open, they're mainstream, our policies are mainstream. This year has been a turning point. I think that um, after many years where kind of right-wing ideology, kind of racist ideology was, was on the way down, it was getting less and less support in society at large. I think that uh, a combination of the, 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 the Brexit vote and the, and the campaign that went, went with it, uh, the future direction of the country, Trump's victory in the US, has stirred, um, stirred kind of emotions and in a way allowed some of these kind of right-wing ideas back into the political mainstream. A new generation of young far-right activists is emerging. 
where the old diehards marched and brawled, they used social media. Jack Bugby belongs to a group called Liberty GB. He's 23. Following Joe Cox's death, he was the first candidate to announce he would stand in the by-election. In his campaign, he tried to capitalise on a scandal about local Asian men systematically sexually abusing white girls. Right, so here's the thing. With this election, for instance, never was I going to get elected. No chance in hell, right? No, so, but my, my, my point here is, operating as a small party, even though we won't get elected in this, we've had an influence. The polls have closed, and the quiet bureaucracy of democracy kicks into action. The teams from Liberty GB and the BNP await the result. Braben, Tracy Lynn, Labour Party, 17,506. No media. Bucky, Jack, no, no to terrorism, no yes media, to Britain, no Liberty GB, 220. Buckby only gets a handful more votes than the eccentrics and independents who've also stood. And the BNP doesn't do much better. Furness, David, British National Party, Local People First, 548. It's a reminder of how far the far right has fallen from the days not long ago when they were winning seats in local and European elections. I asked Batley and Spen's new MP Tracy Brobin what she's made of going up against them. What, what was our tragedy, they've seen as their opportunity to spread division and hatred. Far-right activists have been very keen to place as much space as possible between their views and Tommy Mayer's. Well, first of all, uh, Tommy Mayer's nothing to do with the BNP and there's no record of him attending any BNP meetings. He was not a member, we don't know anything about him. And uh, I think we'll leave that for the courts as to what his motivation was. Tommy Mayer was a hardline Nazi, and really he took in the propaganda of the 1990s, which was about race war. So it was an ideology that came from the US, that you don't fight immigrants, you don't fight Muslims or blacks, you fight the system, and, and that politicians are traitors, and that was obviously why he targeted his, his, his local MP. Liberty GB's Jack Buckby says there's no comparison between his group's views and Mayer's neo-Nazism. Instead, he wants to talk about Islam. Communities are already divided, we've already had race wars and we're going to have more. We're going to end up with tit-for-tat attacks like what happened to Joe Cox. We're going to see churches burnt down, we're going to see mosques burnt down. That's what happens, right? Islam has never co uh, peacefully coexisted in any Western country. Doesn't happen. Um, this is going to happen anyway. Um, I want to try and stop that. There are certainly signs of division in Yorkshire, but equally, there is harmony. This is Fayez Rashid. Um, I'm a Batley lad. I've lived uh, decades uh, uh, of life in Batley. Uh, originally I came from Kashmir in 1975. I knew Joe Cox. Um, Joe Cox, myself and some of the other people will, were involved with some of the campaign issues with her. I've always believed that Britain is the most tolerant society in the world despite all those issues and it's nothing that uh, we can't, uh, can't overcome. I put that to Jack Buckby. And for a man of Kashmiri heritage, you know, if he's assimilating, that's all great with me. But for, for a Kashmiri to try and tell me what British identity is, that's kind of offensive, don't you think? It sounds like you're saying, though, that you, for, you foresee real deep-seated social strife. Civil war. A civil war. I mean, if that civil war comes, what side are you going to be on? I mean, are you going to be one of these people who's trying to hold the peace? Or I don't does want come to a, be fighting. I don't know. But I, I, does there come a point where you where you say, as parts of let's say the American right have said, actually the parliamentary route has failed? It could well fail in the future, but that's Labour's fault. You know, Labour and the Conservative Party they don't represent normal people anymore. And as Roger Scruton said, you know, you take away the democracy, people. The only thing people are left with is is fight. You know, the fight within them, and that's what's going to happen. I don't want to see that to happen. Um, what side am I going to be on? I'm going to be on the side of my own people of my own culture, but I, I certainly don't want to be out there fighting. I don't want that to happen. This is the spot where Tommy Mayer killed Joe Cox just outside the library in Burst. Months later, it's serving as a polling station in the election to choose her successor as MP. The judge who sentenced Mayor told him he'd betrayed the quintessence of our country, its adherence to parliamentary democracy. Many on the far right disavow the silent recluse who will spend the rest of his days in prison, but his act of terrorism will be remembered as the darkest moment of a troubled year.